we've been on top of a from the tunnel. And um, I've been talking to a, a resident around the area and telling me the tsunami completely swept through the entire city. So powerful that I was even able to see the rivers, uh, the river. It was vis- visible when the when the earthquake and simultaneously. And uh, and every person that I've been talking to, they told me that the crucial concern of each one of every one of them is the communication. Um, the landlines and the mobile phones are not usable even at this moment, as well as water, electricity, and gases. And as for transportation, um, they are not able to go by car to not not far to places because the gasoline cans are basically closed. And the ones that are actually open, they are used by the relief vehicles, which are used for emergencies, such as fire trucks. And concerning those fire trucks, at 7 a.m. this morning, uh, local time, a total of 1,400 people, including uh, police as well as self-defense force units and firefighters, they were uh, they have begun to provide uh, emergency relief aid to uh, for the aftermath of the fire that also came after the tsunami. And uh, they were using helicopters, and while I was reporting in the afternoon, at least 20 helicopters went uh, over my head. And the problem was that they weren't able to reach the people in need because of all the debris and the tree that were blocking the road. So basically, the rescue workers had to get off, off their helicopters and walk to the people in need of help. And finally... Uh, we have information that chilled foods, such as pancakes, were also being distributed as mutual aid donations uh, to children from food companies. And that's all for now. Back to you, NHK World, Raja Pradhan. Our apologies for the bad connection. Prime Minister Naoto Khan has ordered power cuts to deal with severe electricity shortages as a major power company struggles to cope with the aftermath of Friday's massive earthquake. 突然の大規模停電が国民生活。We have to avoid at all costs a sudden power shortage whose scale could have devastating consequences for the economy and people's lives. That is why I have ordered the Tokyo Electric Power Company to schedule power cuts from tomorrow. I am confident that people can overcome these times of hardship if we stand united against the deadly earthquake and tsunami. The Director General of the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, Tetsuhiro Hosono, said electricity will be suspended in five areas for three-hour periods in rotation beginning tomorrow at 6.20 a.m. The planned outages are said to be needed for several weeks. Details have not been given concerning special arrangements for hospitals and other essential public services. Japan's meteorological agency has upgraded Friday's massive earthquake that hit the Pacific coast of northeastern Japan from magnitude 8.8 to 9.0. The agency announced the upgrade on Sunday after analyzing seismic waves and other data. The agency says the focal zone of Friday's quake measured about 500 kilometers long by 200 kilometers wide. The destructive movement continued for more than five minutes. There have been four other earthquakes in recorded history with a magnitude of nine or greater. The largest earthquake hit Chile in 1960 with a magnitude of 9.5, killing over 1,600 people. It triggered tsunami that swept across the Pacific Ocean, killing 142 people in Japan. The latest quake in Japan is equivalent in magnitude to the powerful 2004 earthquake off Sumatra, Indonesia. The magnitude 9.1 Sumatra quake triggered massive tsunami in the Indian Ocean, with the death toll reaching more than 200,000. A meteorological agency official told a news conference on Sunday that Friday's earthquake was highly unusual and that the agency had never detected anything like it before. He warned that the threat of aftershocks measuring more than 7.0 magnitude will continue for the next week. We have inspected the destructive movements of the quake. 
we found that three massive earthquakes had occurred one after another in a complex manner. Then we analyzed the data once again and determined that the magnitude this time was actually 9.0. In the next three days, the possibility of magnitude 7 or more exceeds 70 percent for the first time. As the earlier graph showed, many aftershocks will probably be felt for many original quakes take place in many places. Therefore, we have to brace for aftershocks of five or even around six. A major aftershocks with an intensity of seven and more could cause major tsunami. Tsunami warnings or advisories are likely to be issued. Earlier, I spoke with Yugi Yagi, associate professor at the University of Tsukuba, on the devastating quake. Professor Yagi, thanks for joining us today. The Meteorological Agency has upgraded Friday's massive earthquake from magnitude 8.8 .8 to 9.0. What does this 0 0.2 difference mean? So 0 0.2 difference means twice the amount of the pre original, uh, previous original estimate. So magnitude 9.0 quite large. So Japan coastline moved to four meter to east. The meteorological agency announced earlier that there is a 70 percent chance of aftershocks of a magnitude of seven or more in the next few days. So, especially aftershock activity uh, increase, especially the northern part of the focal zone and the southern part of focal zone. If uh, magnitude seven or Eight earthquake generated, they create a huge tsunami. So, uh, when uh, magnitude eight class occur, a uh, large earthquake, a uh, large tsunami generated. So, such a large tsunami will be propagated to the Hawaii and Pacific Ocean area. So, please keep attention of the seismicity in Japan. In the northern part and southern part of the focal zone. Mm -hmm. Why weren't the experts able to predict? the massive earthquake? We only have this huge earthquake uh, once every hun uh, thousand years. Once every thousand years? Yeah. So it's hard to predict. Uh, so we don't have uh, any record of previous such a huge earthquakes. So Friday's massive earthquake had nothing to do with New Zealand's? So no relationship to New Zealand, so it's uh, too far, and the New Zealand earthquake too s small uh, to affect the Japan island. We also had a jolt in Nagano. How about that? Does it have anything to do with that? So we don't have uh, any evidence, scientific evidence at this time, but uh, I think uh, uh, such huge earthquake could shake Japan island. So. Maybe Nagano uh, earthquake uh, triggered by these earthquakes. Professor Yagi, thank you very much. And that was Professor at the University of Tsukuba, Mr. Yugi Yagi. Prime Minister Naoto Kan has doubled the size of the Self Defense Forces relief mission to 100,000 personnel. Khan was speaking at an emergency disaster task force meeting on Sunday morning. <laughs> Khan said the government will provide direct support in areas where local municipalities are no longer functioning. He also instructed the participants to begin the task of reconstruction in the aftermath of the quake. 
Nuclear power plants in Fukushima Prefecture are still battling to cool their reactors two days after the massive earthquake hit the region. The level of coolant water at the Fukushima number one plant's number three reactor dropped on Sunday. The fuel rods were exposed about two meters above water for at least two hours. This may have caused the rods to partially melt. The heat may have caused hydrogen to accumulate under the shell of the reactor building, which could lead to an explosion similar to that of the plant's number one reactor on Saturday. Tokyo Electric is considering ways to release the hydrogen from the building. Meanwhile, the number one reactor and its containment vessel are being filled with seawater. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says by now the vessel should be filled to the brim and that it should be safe as long as water continues to be poured in. At the number two reactor, the coolant level is lower than normal and the pressure in the containment vessel. We continue our coverage on the devastating earthquake here in Japan. Miyagi Prefecture Police Chief Naoto Takeuchi says the final death toll from the quake and tsunamis may exceed 10,000 in the prefecture alone. Takeuchi made the announcement at a meeting at this prefectural office on Sunday. Japan's worst ever earthquake hit the northeastern region on Friday afternoon. The magnitude 9.0 quake caused massive tsunami waves that stretched hundreds of kilometers along the Pacific coast of northeastern Japan. One of the waves measures 7.3 meters. As of 8 p.m. on Sunday, more than 1,300 people had been confirmed dead, mainly in northeastern prefectures. The death toll may rise as the process of recovering and identifying bodies continues. Miyagi Prefecture was hit the hardest. 515 deaths have been confirmed in Higashi Matsushima, Kesenuma, and Sendai. The National Police Agency says more than 200 bodies were found in the, in the Nobiru district of Higashi Matsuyama City. It says 137 were transferred to a nearby gymnasium. A tsunami survivor in Natori City, Miyagi, Tatsuro Ishikawa says he was suddenly pushed into water when his house was hit by a high wave. I felt so cold in the water. I tried to get out. But my clothes were caught by something in the level. As he was swept away by the wave, Ishikawa saw that his house was approaching the nursing home. Fortunately, I saw there were still people inside the building. I cried for help. I thought I was dying when I was pushed into the water. But my thoughts were focused on my family. I decided to make every effort to survive. In the Arahama district of Sendai City, 200 to 300 bodies have been found in a coastal area. In the town of Minami Senriku, nearly all the buildings and houses were swept away by tsunamis. Local officials are unable to contact more than 10,000 people, more than half the town's population. In neighboring Iwate Prefecture, the city of Rikuzen Takata was totally destroyed by tsunami. 335 people have been confirmed dead and hundreds of bodies were covered. Rescuers say 300 to 400 bodies were found in the city's center alone, and the death toll in Iwate may reach at least 600. Iwate police say that 315 residents are missing. Etsuka Oyama, a civil servant from the city, was evacuated to a nearby building soon after the quake. When a tsunami hit the building, she was on the third floor with her daughter. A tsunami hit us. I grabbed something tightly, holding my daughter's hand, but I lost my grip when I was swept away in the debris and water. 
Uyama was saved by a local resident after being swept about 400 meters from the building, but the fate of her daughter remains unknown. I managed to survive, but my daughter was washed away. I don't know what to say. I hope my daughter is still alive somewhere. In Fukushima Prefecture, the authorities have confirmed 285 deaths. They say that nearly 1,200 people are missing. More than, three, more than 315,000 evacuees in northeastern Japan are taking shelter at schools and other public institutions. They're facing extreme cold at night as the heating system are short of fuel. I'm looking for my daughter. <laughs> Our home is gone, so she wouldn't know where to go. As other family members are safe, I only hope my daughter is alive somewhere. <laughs> NHK has learned that over 315,000 people were taking refuge at around 1,900 evacuation centers as of 1 p.m. Sunday. But officials in devastated areas are unable to confirm the actual number of evacuees. Temperatures drop sharply at night in those areas, and some shelters are struggling to keep people warm. And the rescuers are struggling to get to thousands of people who remain stranded in the tsunami-struck region. These isolated outposts have been confirmed in 70 places in Tohoku region, including Miyagi, Iwate, and Fukushima prefectures. In Kasenuma city in Miyagi, more than 3,400 people are stranded. Still, 1,000 people are in a fish market, and other 300 are in a food processing facility. In Minami Senriku town, at least 2,300 residents are cut off. Among them, 800 people are waiting for help in a gymnasium, while nearly 1,000 students and adults are thought to have taken shelter in two schools in the area. In Ishinomaki city, at least 3,800 people are isolated. Among them, about 600 people are stranded in a shopping center. In Rikuzen Takata city, Iwate prefecture, about 100 students are still waiting to be rescued from a high, high school play field. In Soma city, the Fukushima prefecture, rescuers have still not been able to reach residents trapped in their homes because of flooded roads. The earthquake has caused extensive damage to roads and bridges in northeastern Japan as well as the Tokyo region. Power is still out in many areas and nearly all train services are suspended in the northwest eastern part of the country. Roads have been damaged in more than 500 locations, while 29 bridges have been damaged. 62 landslides have also been reported. About 1.5 million households had no power on Sunday night. Among them, all 1.1 million households in Miyagi Prefecture are without electricity. Power companies say it will take some time to resume service. At least 1.4 million households have no water. The Health and Welfare Ministry has dispatched nearly 100 vehicles to supply drinking water to residents. A truck driver from Ishinomaki City was visiting Shimonoseki City in Yamaguchi Prefecture, western Japan, when the quake hit. On Sunday, he returned to his hometown with drinking water from Yamaguchi. All Shinkansen bullet trains connecting Tokyo with major cities in northeastern Japan have suspended operations. All local train lines in the area will be out of service through Sunday night, except for a few lines on the sea of Japan coast. <laughs> Nous sommes à Miyako, dans le nord-est du pays. Dans un vacarme assourdissant, la vague géante déferle alors que certains automobilistes sont encore au volant de leur véhicule. Deux jours après la catastrophe, 
Les télévisions locales reçoivent des vidéos amateurs de Japonais paniqués, comme ici à Sendai, près de l'épicentre du séisme. Elle rentre dans la ville. La stupeur de ce caméraman amateur. Les premières grosses vagues déferlent sur la côte Est. Un, deux, puis rapidement quatre mètres, comme ici à Kensenuma. Dans cet autre village, même scène de dévastation, les maisons sont emportées sous les yeux des habitants, totalement médusés. Eux ont eu de la chance, ils se sont mis à l'abri sur les hauteurs. 16h20, le tsunami annoncé 1h30 plus tôt fond sur les terres une vague géante de 10 mètres de haut. À quelques kilomètres de là, cette ville de 40 000 habitants est engloutie en quelques minutes. Minami Sanriku, ce car lutte presque à contre-courant sur une portion de route encore épargnée. Ce petit port inondé, c'est aujourd'hui la ville aux 10 000 disparus. Plus de la moitié des habitants sont introuvables. Par au parleur, les autorités font ce qu'elles peuvent pour alerter les habitants. Ici la mairie de Kesenuma. Alerte maximale au tsunami. Une ville entière comme un décor de carton pâte face à la force des flots.